Good morning, everyone. Welcome. My name is Dina. This is my channel about cross stitch. Today, I am going to be working on pandemic. And one of um, my commenters recently asked me if I would go through showing how I cut my thread and divide my thread and use my thread in order to get my variegation to flow um, the way that I try to do on pandemic. So I know I've uh, kind of shown you a little bit before just um, by taking a, a strand and saying I cut it here, here and, and whatnot, but I think this individual really wanted to see uh, that in action. And so I'm gonna try to do that as best I can. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I cut it and then I will um, at some point turn the camera around when I get to the end of one strand. I'll show you how I then try to start the next one, how I pick the color and that sort of thing. So I hope this is helpful. Um, it's not something that everybody wants to go through. It's not hard, but um, I just wanted the colors to flow from light to dark, dark to light, instead of me working in an area and it all being one shade and then it have this harsh break the next time I start a thread. So I just wanted it to be, I guess, a little smoother. So here's what I do. And I'm gonna start with a brand new skein so you can um, see what, how that works. So you look at the number in to find the end that you want and that's the end you pull from, I'm told because then it goes a lot smoother when you're pulling it out. So I found the, the cut end here, and you're supposed to be able to just pull and it comes out without any trouble. Isn't that nice? Now here's what I'm gonna do. I have a fairly medium color on this end that starts. I want to pull my thread out until I see, there's the lightest light, and then you can see it goes back to medium and now it's getting a little darker. You can see it up against my arm there. A little bit darker, darker. And now it's in the darkest shade of blue. And I'm gonna keep pulling this until it goes back. It's starting to go back now to a medium. And I think this is about the color where I started. So I'm gonna compare that by pulling my original end up, putting the colors next to each other, and I'd say that's about right, don't you? About the right color. So that's where I'm gonna cut my strand because that means I've got the entire spectrum of light to dark back to the light color in this long strand of floss. So now what I want to do is look at where the color changes. Okay, so I'm gonna start where I, you know, at the beginning of the color and I'm gonna get into my darkest color of blue. And right where I've got dark blue on both sides for about the same amount of time, it's, it's a matter of just what looks good to your eye. I just want to have the same color to end my thread and to start the next one. And I'm looking at what I think, you know, is an appropriate length that I can work with as well because you're gonna tie these together, I do, um, to get two strands. You can't, I'm not uh, doing a loop start with these uh, because I want my colors to show really well. So there's a nice length of thread. I can manage that. Um, so here's that start and then it goes to uh, darker. So I'm gonna lay this down here on my desk. That's my first grouping. And then I'm gonna go another one. And I generally try to get my threads 
about three um, different sets. And this is a nice light on both sides. So that's where I'm cutting the second one. So you, it's easy to see where you pick up because this dark matches the dark that I just laid down. So I'll put it next to it on my desk. And then this light matches the light that I put down. And then it goes back to medium. So this means when I get started today, which one I start with depends on where I'm working. So I'm gonna turn you a little bit more to see this. Um, in fact, I think I may need to move you a little bit closer. There you go. So as you can see, I've got different places in here that I could start working on. This is very light. So if I wanted to start up here, I would start with the lightest of the blues. This is medium light. This is a little bit darker. This is the darkest blue. And this is a combination of where it went from darkest blue to medium to lighter to very light. This is where my strand went. That's how I stitched. So if I want to pick up right here, I would pick up with my very light and I would get started again. So, I think uh, for ease, <laughs> there's this part right here is actually connected. Um, this little flower thing is coming right out of my pattern. So, I think I'll start right here. And that is a medium blue. And um, this is is fairly light but it's gonna go up toward the light light color up here so um, I think what I'll do is start on my um, what my first cut is I want to look at it and see if it matches pretty well and it does so I lay my thread right there on my piece and if you can see That's a pretty good match of color. Sorry for the movement. Okay, so this is my actually my middle cut. So what I can do now is this will go to the dark. My dark will be next, so I'll put that next in my lineup up here. And then it goes to the uh, lightest light, and I'll put that at the end and finish it out. So I rearrange my um, strands so that I stitch on this one first, the first two that I pull. And then I'm going to the second group of threads and I pull two of those. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move you again, I'm sorry. I'm gonna show you how this looks. Now I'm gonna lay this one down that I've decided I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna flip you around and show you the threads. Okay, so I've determined this is the one I'm gonna start with, this will be second, and this will be third. And I just leave them laying here on my desk. Now I'm gonna pull two from here, I'll stitch that till it's done, and then I'm gonna pull two from here and I will start, this is gonna end on dark blue, I'll start with this dark blue and keep going, and then when I get to this light color right here, I will pick that light color up and I'll stitch with that. Now, that means I've done two, two, and two. And then when I get ready to start again, look how nice this is. This is medium. This is medium. I will match that end to that end and keep going. So now I will tell you, I try to plan when I stitch on Pandemic that I'm gonna stitch all that thread. I'm, that's my stitching time. I'm gonna keep stitching on this piece until all those strands are gone. So it would be two, two, and two, and then I start over, two, two, and two, and then I go two, two, and two. So when you get all of those done, um, you probably are gonna be around three or 400 stitches. Um, it's a great stitching session for me. And then I don't have any leftover little bits and bobs of thread that I have to contend with that I don't know what order, you know, I want to put it in. So that's kind of how I do it. Um, 
I'm gonna start right in here with this color and I'll stitch on it and when I get ready to swap out the strands and I, I get to the um, point of doing that, then I will come back on and I will pick it up and show you how I'm at, you know, that it matches and kind of go from there. But I think you get the idea. The main thing for me is that I have to keep those threads in order. I have to keep them in order. So, um, and I only pull out two at a time and I make sure that I connect them with a little tiny, tiny, um, it's not even a knot. It's one, it's one, uh, half of a knot. I, I put my uh, strands through and pull them so that they're connected together. It's this such a tiny, tiny little thing that it's imperceptible. And so after I do that, it's not a knot, it's just tied together to hold them together. Now I can do a loop start because that forms my loop. So that's what I do. It's not complicated but that's just how I do it. That's how I've come to uh, figure out how I'm gonna make it work. So I'm gonna do some stitching now and I will come back and show you when I start the next trend how that turns out. Okay, I finished stitching that first strand and I did this little flower all the way up to here and you can see it's darker. I ended in that very dark. So I went and picked up my second group of threads. It starts at the dark end. I've already pulled one thread. I'm gonna pull my second one and put them together. And I'm gonna lay this down right next to my other threads to keep them, like I said, in order. Um, I do have on my floor stand a little knobs that I can wrap threads around, but the way that I use my floor stand with my pattern clipped to the top and this roller frame here in the stand, it's not as easy to get to the um, threads. So again, I've, I've looped it one time around, made that little tiny connection, and that will form my loop. And I made sure, the main thing you just keep track of is you, the end that you want to connect needs to be the color that you want to stitch with next. And so I'm going to go up here for the first stitch. I'm at the top of the flower now starting the bird legs. I just flipped it around, so let me secure that again. And it's long enough I can actually pull it under here <laughs> and put my thread through there and pull it up. So I'm going to stitch a couple of stitches in here so you can see how well that transitions. And then I'll take the camera uh, close so you can see it. So let's look, how did we do? You can see here, there's the last row I did, and then there's the first two stitches, and it's just gonna flow right on up into the next shade. I like the fact that uh, it worked out to have the really dark uh, thread going to the lighter thread here, because most of the bird will be dark enough that you can see it well. And then by the time you get to the tip top of the bird, it may be light, but there'll be enough darkness in there that you'll be able to tell it's a bird. <laughs> okay, I'm going to uh, stitch this strand and then I'll come back and show you how it matches up with the third one. And I think you'll have it. You probably already do, but I'll show it to you anyway. Okay. I am now starting my third strand, and as you can tell, it's starting out very light, and then it'll go back to my original color that I started with 
right down here because that's the full, that's the final third of my initial strand. So I'll stitch that and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like. And the other thing I did want to share with you is that there are times when you, like when I get up here, if this bird's head wasn't going to show well enough, I could go to a strand that I had just finished and repeat that color if I needed to. I try not to do that because it gets me out of sync. But then if you look around, you can find another spot where you need to start something that's the color shade you want. And you just start there and run that strand out. <laughs> so you can kind of manipulate it when you need to. Okay, I have finished the bird. Here is my bird. I started right here, connecting to this. I went up, flower, into the bird, all the way up to the top, and he's got a little flower in his beak, and it's a um, specialty stitch there in his little beak. Um, now, I have this little strip remnant of that color uh, left and so I'll put it over here with my threads in the same location of where I pulled that strand from so I know it's this color uh, spectrum that that little remnant goes to. So now I had started here then went here then went here and I have finished this motif. So now I have to decide where do I want to go from here. I'm really trying to finish the page break. Unfortunately, it breaks right in the middle of this. But I think it might be best if I go back here where I started, where I joined and went up, and join and go down. So guess what? That same color is in my first row here to get started so I can do the exact same thing and and do the same three in the same uh, order and I can keep going and that's what I'm gonna do and I hope you've enjoyed uh, me sharing with you how I go about using my variegated thread in my pandemic I hope that's been helpful um, as I said I did that in response to a request so um, I hope the rest of you enjoyed it as well and if you've gleaned anything that's helpful to you, I'm, I'm pleased as punch. So I hope you have happy stitching the rest of the day, and I'm going to get back to working on Pandemic. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Dina, and it is Monday, February the 27th. We are almost done with this month. Can you believe it? <laughs> well, today... I filmed a little um, demonstration. What a great timing because I was using the long dog sampler pattern to meet my final prompt in my challenge from my uh, Daily 30 group. And that challenge was to stitch on a piece that you could tie to the UK. Well, if you look up, contact us on long dog samplers, um, the address is in Norfolk, um, UK. So this company is based out of the United Kingdom. So that's what I decided to do. Now, I, um, I showed you a couple of clips earlier when I filmed me getting started with the threads and then I just continued stitching and I continued stitching as I had commented earlier until I completed all of the floss that I had cut today, which were three links. That was the spectrum of the three colors. And each of those three cuts, you know, have six strands. And so I, you use them in pairs. I'm doing two over two. So I had um, three sets of two in each of those and so that's nine um, pairs of threads that I, I wound up stitching today 
And I had said originally I thought it would be at least three or 400 stitches. Well, it was 625. <laughs> so here's where that got us today. So today I started my initial stitching right, mm, where's the leaf? Right about here where that leaf is. And I stitched this first and went all the way up and finished the bird. It gets really light at the top, but it fits in with everything up there. Then I decided I could come back down to that same spot and go down, um, starting with the same end of the floss and repeat those three groupings of threads again. So I came down and I got all this done and it ended in the dark thread. So, I needed to then use another set of my threads that started in a lighter color because that's what I had left. So I came down here where the light color was and I kept on right here and I finished this big outer uh, diamond around here. There's the little bunny rabbit that's sitting off to the side of, over it. And I came in and well, by the time I got to the middle, it got dark again. And then as I was coming up, it got lighter. So this is the body of, I think it's a peacock. And this is the head, just beginning of the head. I have three more rows to do of this head, a leaf that's in its mouth, and then on the back of its head over here, oh, the leaf is over here. On the back of his head are these wonderful little spin wheel things that are meant to be, I think, his feathers. But once I finish this little bird here, this peacock here, there is a section at the bottom right in here that's very light, it's hard to see. But there's a section at the bottom that I have to stitch from right here down to here. And that is the page finish. There is a uh, middle um, plant, long stem plant that goes all the way to the bottom of the page. And in the middle of that plant right there is the page break. That's the page break right there. But when you're using such variegated floss, I can't do this page side of it and not do that page side of it. So I'm going to come back the next time. I'm going to finish this bird finish the bottom, and then when I come up here to start, I will do that whole thing all in one, you know, I'll do it as one thing. And it, when I finish it, I will have more than a page finish. So I'm, I'm pretty close to this page finish, really and truly. And then I have a partial page to finish the row. Um, but I think it's going really, really well. I've, I've loosened it and I don't have my side things pulling on it so it looks like it's puckering but that's because of how it's rolled up and how it's sitting so there you go there's my uh, long dog sampler uh, I was to stitch either 300 or 400 stitches depending on how many points I wanted or tokens I wanted to earn in this group and um, today I got 625 <laughs> so I got more than I needed for the top level and that's great I was kind of hoping to get the page finished today, but 625 stitches for me is, is just about five hours, four and a half to five hours. And uh, I have a Zoom tonight to stitch with friends and I don't know what I wanna work on, but I know I'm tired and I need to, I need to uh, take a break from this right now. It's not hard stitching it's mentally challenging because I'm always looking which direction do I want to go with the, th with the floss so that I can hopefully make it meet up all around, you know, uh, from, from whichever angle I'm coming from. It doesn't always work. Sometimes there are hard breaks, like right here. There's a dark color all of a sudden because it came from over here and joined up, but that's going to happen and that's okay. Um, but I do think it's, a beautiful piece and this is one of those you really kind of have to look at it close up to see the detail you it's not something that you need to look at far away it sort of blurs into the background 
This is one of those you need to come walk right up to and really look at to see all the detail in it. It's amazing. But I've already been working today identifying um, what projects I want to use for my March acrostics and Pandemic is in my acrostics. So I will get to pull it back out next month and I'm hoping so much so to finish that page, even to go over and finish that thing in the middle if I can. So there you go, my Pandemic. And um, my friend Glow says that this is my Pandemic shirt because she thinks it looks a lot like Pandemic. It has the same color scheme and it has this really busy pattern on it. <laughs> she calls it my Pandemic shirt. So today when I knew I was gonna work on Pandemic, I actually put it on on purpose. And then I texted her and said, I'm wearing my Pandemic shirt today <laughs> so I can stitch on Pandemic. It was funny. So um, I think that's great. I've got my working copy here. I've taped up my pages together. I'll show you really fast just how I've done. That's the middle I'm talking about, the page break right there. Um, so I am right there at it, which will be great. So I'm gonna put it away for the evening. Uh, well, till the end of the month, a couple of days from now. Uh, I don't know that I'll get it out before we go on vacation, but uh, we'll go from there. Uh, our son came today and went on a hike with Coco and my husband, and they had a blast. And my son came, when they got back home, he said, she knows the way. She knows the way on those trails. She runs ahead and she looks back to guide us, to tell us to come on. And after they had been there just a few minutes and she realized that she was on the trail in the woods, she got the zoomies and just zoomed and zoomed and zoomed. She was so excited to be back outside and to be able to walk again. I'm so glad they did that earlier today because it's been raining ever since. <laughs> it stopped now. My husband's taking her on a brief walk um, just to let her stretch her legs again. But um, anyway, it's been a great day. It's been a great day. Got to see my son. And it's been a great day because I've gotten a lot of stitching done. And um, now I'm going to get stitched with friends a little bit. So looking forward to it. Well, I hope you're having a, a wonderful start to your week. I hope you're getting to stitch. I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead of you. Happy stitching. Hello, I'm back in. I just wanted to share with you a little more stitching that I got to do today. Had a Zoom call with some friends and we were able to um, stitch together and talk and chat. And so I pulled out my I am a needlesmith and the reason I did this one is because it's on my list of um, year of whips and so when I finish everything at the end of a month I finish all my prompts and I am waiting for a day or two for the beginning of the next month to start all of the acrostics and things like that for that month then I try to use that extra time to stitch on one of my year of whips I feel like that gives a little extra oomph, you know, as we go. So tonight, I wanted to try to do what I had kind of talked about doing before, and that was to stitch the young girl first and then fit everything around her just in case I was off at all on my stitch count. I don't think I am, but just in case. I wanted her to be front and center because I thought that was very uh, much the focus of the piece. So tonight, what I did was the outer portion of her skirt, this green that goes down both sides, and I got it color completed, which is awesome. And I thought, oh, this is great. I wonder how far down I've got to go. And I looked at my pattern and I realized I've come a long way because you see, here's the end of the pattern right below her dress. It's not that far below her dress. And there's the bottom of her dress, except for the, you know, the front that comes across here a little bit. But that that's pretty close in the positioning of it. So that made me feel good because I am getting uh, well well into it now on that second page. 
So I'm kind of happy about that. It is, of course, heavy in the stitching. Um, but there is some of the um, fabric showing all down here too. So it's kind of like what you stitch up here. There's fabric showing in here. So it may not be too terribly uh, much longer before I could finish this if I can use it for prompts and things. Uh, and I am planning on taking it with me to the beach. So the nice thing about um, today is that I was able to look at acrostics. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you too. I did 307 stitches in this today to complete this skirt. Some of you like to hear the stats, so I wanted to be sure I, I told you. Uh, but what I had started to tell you is today I was able to pull out the acrostics for um, magazine monthly challenge and the 24 hours of cross stitch. So I have calculated up what I'm going to do for those two acrostics. And in the monthly magazine challenge, you could actually do either uh, one of two or both. The first one is Etsy and the second one is Charge It. <laughs> I love that, that's great. And then in 24 hours of cross stitch, it is impromptu. So I thought that was very fun. And I have gotten what I think I'm gonna stitch on for each of the letters assigned. And then I looked at um, what I had assigned to them. And uh, as I was picking them, I was looking at my list of what I wanted as potential that I could take on vacation with me because they're on Q-snaps. And I, when I made my acrostics over here, uh, this is my working copy. Um, then I kept that in mind. Here's what I can take with me. So how many of these could I work on, you know, while I'm at the beach? So that's, that's going to help me determine what I take with me. So that was good planning today. I enjoyed that, enjoyed doing that. Now, there will be a new challenge in the Daily 30 group that will come out this coming Friday. And I will look at that and see if I can meet those uh, pieces and if I can take what I need to take with me in order to do that. So that'll help me pick out what I'm gonna take with me when we leave Sunday. Well, it's been a great day. It's been a great day of stitching. I certainly have gotten a lot done today. Uh, pandemic, um, 625 stitches in that and then another 307 stitches in I Am A Needlesmith. Um, wouldn't have done that much stitching today other than the fact that my son and husband and Coco were gone on a hike all morning, so I got great stitching time there. And then um, this evening I had a Zoom time with friends to stitch and um, I needed something that I could do, you know, pretty easily and I thought that skirt was the perfect solution and, and it was and I actually got it done so very excited about that. So there you go. That's my stitching for today. Uh, I hope that you have a, uh, a week uh, that's pleasant and um, and fun for you and that you get stitching time. That's that For me that's a, a big wish for you is that you get stitching time because I sure cherish mine. All right, good night everybody and happy stitching. Good evening everyone, how are you? It is February 28th, it's the last day of the month and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my stitching. Here at the end of the month after I finished all of my goals for all of my um, challenges and things like that. I had a couple of days where I could just stitch on anything I wanted. And today was that second day of doing that. And so I did a similar thing that I did the first time, which was to look at my list of Year of Whips. I have finished two of my sixth Year of Whips already, and that those are Christmas Sentiments and It's Spring Fever. And I am today working on 
one that is on my list. I did that yesterday when I worked on I Am a Needlesmith. It's on my list of six. And so today I picked a different one that's on my list of six. And I worked on Joyful Scene by Teresa Kogut. I had a goal I wanted to hit. It wasn't working for a prompt, just a goal I set for myself. Um, before I started doing prompts and things to set goals, I used to just set goals every time I picked up a project and I'd look at it, I'd set a little goal for myself and I would stitch till I completed it and I'd put it away. And that's when I knew when I was ready to move on to another project where now I stitch a number of stitches based on the goals. So it's kind of the same, but um, I do a whole lot more goals now <laughs> than I ever did before. Anyway, I pulled this out and I had started this deer before and I had his head and face down to his shoulders. Well, I had the front legs done and the little white here. And so starting about right here, I had all the rest of that little deer to get done. So today my goal was to finish the deer. And I did. Isn't he precious? <laughs> There are two little spaces on his back because that's where the legs are going to be for the animal that's standing on top of him. <laughs> and I believe it is a sheep, yes. So you can see there's the little sheep and his two little, two of his four legs dip down um, one stitch into the deer's back itself. So that's what I have those little spaces for right there. Anyway, Today, I finished him, and I'm just delighted that I was able to get that done. It was 598 stitches, just two shy of 600. Isn't that amazing? I kept thinking, I ought to put two more stitches in here somewhere, but there wasn't anything requiring only two stitches, and I didn't want to get started on something else because I'd have been wanted to finish that little motif as well. <laughs> so I stopped. <laughs> I stopped where I was. So there you go. I am delighted to get it this far um, because this is something that I definitely want to finish this year and now it's doable pretty doable I've got a sheep a chicken the house joy and this little end right here so I'm thinking that probably maybe I could get that done these these little things and joy done in one stitching session uh, this done maybe in one. That's a lot of stitches. Um, could probably get this done in one and possibly these done in one. So, you know, four to five times that I pick it up for a prompt stitching, uh, might finish it up and I'm sure I'll do that uh, the rest of this year because I have put it, I believe, for my acrostics for March. I think it's in there. So, if not, you know, I'll pull it out anyway when I get to the end of the month because I will look at my list of Euro Whips and um, I'll be working on those anyway. So there you have it. So here's my Teresa Cogate's Joyful Scene and I am really enjoying it. It's coming along very well. I was sweating it, this color right here. I had a very little bit left. Sorry, didn't mean to shake the camera. Um, the color is mocha, and this is what I have left of it. <laughs> I, I have cut, it's weak, so I cut my strands. I have one complete strand and one little uh, uh, pair in there um, that, you know, were the end of the next to last strand. I was that close. I mean, that is a strand of six, but, you know, I was sweating it just a little bit. Anyway, got it done. Very happy about that. Okay, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Wednesday, and I have a wonderfully fun day ahead of me tomorrow. Um, my husband's dropping his truck off um, for a little bit of work on it, and we're leaving very early in the morning because I have to follow him and pick him up. And then I'll bring him back home so that he and Coco can go for a nice walk. But at 11.30 tomorrow, I am meeting a friend of mine. It is her birthday, and we're taking her to lunch. Uh, actually, her birthday was last week, 
and neither of us were here um, on the right day. So <laughs> we're, we're doing it a little after the fact, but it'll be just as fun. And um, we're going to a really nice place and enjoy each other's company for a little while. And so when I get back, I've told my husband he can have the car. Um, for the rest of the afternoon, I'm going to stitch. And he and Coco can go off for a long hike or something. Um, anyway, maybe tomorrow he'll work on taxes. Who knows? He's been working on my printer. My printer quit printing. And he worked an entire afternoon, went through all sorts of diagnostics, help desk, everything. Had to reinstall it. Had to go through registering it all over again. Got it working. I was so excited. I printed off two pieces of paper that I wanted to come up here and update so I could print off my WIPGO board for you. Next day, he got up and tried to print something and it was not working. It keeps telling us it's offline. We don't know why it's saying that and it won't print. Anyway, so now he's got to start all over on that. He's not happy. <laughs> Is not looking forward to it. He told me today, he said, one thing I really do not appreciate is spending an entire afternoon fixing a problem and then having it reoccur for no apparent reason the next day. He said, I'm just not happy with that at all. So, anyway, keep my fingers crossed that he can fix it. Um, other than that, it's a quiet day tomorrow. I love it. I get to stitch. Now, it is Wednesday, so we will go to choir practice. And even though we're leaving town Sunday, and we won't be singing Sunday, we practice music ahead. You know, we practice songs that we may not be singing for three to four weeks down the road, and we work on them every week. And the closer we get to it, the more we work on it, of course, to get to learn all the dynamics and our, our notes and everything else. So um, we don't want to miss a week, even though we're not singing Sunday, because we're going to be working on things that we'll be singing once we get back. So we are going to go. I have something I want to show you. I don't show my fabric of the month every month because um, I don't show a lot of haul. Um, one thing, I don't get a lot of haul. I'm very selective when I buy things. I showed you what I got at the shop Saturday because I was so excited that there is a shop selling cross-stitch items here in Georgia. But this fabric is so beautiful. It's called Flan. I guess Flan, if you're pronouncing it in the Spanish. What do you think about that? Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, really, really pretty. I saw it today and I thought, oh wow, that color is saturated and beautiful. Um, so anyway, I'll have to find something special to put on that. I just wanted to share it with you because it was such a unique color. Um, but that's a Be Stitch Me fabric, and it's Flan, F-L-A-N, if you're interested. And this is the Lugana color. This is the, you know, Lugana usually takes color um, paler than it does when they do linen. So if you were to get this in linen, I can't even imagine how dark and vibrant that would be. But this one's dark enough for me. I like, I like Lugana for one reason, because it's an even weave. And I think my stitches look better. But the other thing I like about it is that it doesn't take these bright colors quite so heavily. And I kind of like them muted. So it usually just really, you know, suits me well. Okay, that is my report for the day. And I know you've got other things to do. And you might want to, I hope you're stitching. I hope you're getting to stitch while we're visiting. But if not, then... Um, Enjoy what you're working on, and um, I hope you have a great, great rest of your day. I look forward to whatever it is I start on tomorrow. It's March 1st, so right now I'm going to get pen and paper. I'm going to do out my spreadsheet like I usually do, my little ledger, and I'm going to plan uh, what I'm going to stitch for every little thing uh, and just see you know, what I have that I can double dip and I, that's how I kind of pick what I'm going to do first. There's another element today, and that is that we leave Sunday out of town. So my, one of my criteria may be different this month. I may be looking for where are my whips that I'm using this month that are on roller frames that I won't be taking with me. 
and see if I want to stitch on those from Wednesday through Saturday. And that way I can still knock out those prompts um, or those letters in the acrostics um, and I can take my Q-snap items with me and I can continue to hit prompts while I'm on vacation. So we'll see. Anyway, happy stitching everybody. However you start your month of March, I wish you well. Hi everyone, welcome back. It is Wednesday. It's March 1st. Happy March 1st. I'm so excited. I'm actually going uh, to get started today on working on my acrostics and my prompts for the month of March. Well, I did exactly what I said I was gonna do. I looked at all of my acrostics and I put them on a spread, you know, a ledger that I like to do where I can see how many prompts I'm using each one for. And then when I decided what to start working on today, I decided to look and see which one of my um, whips could hit more than one prompt, first of all, if it could, and are housed on a roller frame. Because I don't wanna have to cart roller frames with me on vacation. I'd rather take those projects I'm working on, Q-snaps on vacation, because they're easier to transport. But I didn't wanna miss getting these prompts on these roller frames, and so I decided, okay, I'm gonna look at those first. Well, today I decided on autumn belt pull for a couple of reasons. One, it's on a roll frame. Uh, two, it hits two prompts. It hits um, part of an acrostic in my daily 30 group. Uh, that acrostic is St. Patrick's. It also hits an acrostic in my monthly magazine challenge group. Um, that word that I'm, I'm actually gonna do both words. They had Etsy and Charge It, and I'm using it for the A in Charge It. Uh, so it hit the A in St. Patrick's and the A in, in Charge. So it hits two prompts for me. Because it was in the Daily 30 St. Patrick's, it had to have at least 300 stitches in it. So previously, I had started working on this M and I had done the top portion of just the letter. I had stopped it where that flower started. And I think I had, I, I just looked at my, my working copy where I color out when I count. And I had done this M down to where the pumpkin starts. So just the top portion of the M is what I did for this start on this letter. So today, when I pulled it out, I thought, I'm gonna work my way down from top to bottom, so the next logical thing to do is this little flower, and I hope I can get at least 300 stitches out of it. And I had decided that if I didn't, I was gonna go over here and do the lettering until I hit 300, because that's the, um, for the acrostic, that's what you need to get. So today, stitching that flower just to that point, not even with the stem, is 363 stitches. So I hit 300, I actually wound up hitting it about 310. And I had to make a decision, do I go ahead and stop now? Or do I go ahead and finish at least the flower portion? And you know me, when I get close to a finish on anything, even if it's a motif, I want to finish it. So I did, I finished the flower. And I you know, mentioned a while ago that there's not a lot of back stitching. There's no back stitching on that flower, but there are six colors just in the center of the flower. Six. Six different shades of brown. 433, 434, 435, 436, 801. <laughs> They're all in there. Okay. Anyway, I think it's beautiful. I think it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm, I'm tickled to death over it. Now, that's the smaller of the two flowers. You go down a little bit, like just a few stitches actually, and you're gonna hit the next big, big flower. 
And then as you work your way over, you've got the lettering here and then this big pumpkin here. <laughs> big pumpkin. So I have told you before, Stony Creek is one of those stitch heavy designs, but that's why they're so beautiful because they use so many crazy colors, you know, so much uh, to do. So there you have it. I have met the first prompt for March, and I'm tickled to death that it actually hit two. And now I will go and uh, post them in my Facebook groups so that I can um, count them as done. And I will decide before I go to bed tonight, hopefully, which one of my whips I'm gonna work on tomorrow. Busy day, but I hope I get some stitching in. So, we'll see. <laughs> if I do, you'll be the first to know. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It is Thursday, March the 2nd, and I've got some things to share with you. I'm so excited. I wasn't sure how much stitching I would get today because I had a committee at church, the personnel committee, um, we met about an hour and a half today, had a lot to cover. And then um, this evening, about five, we went to a funeral of a friend's, for a friend's father. We did not know him. He was 92 when he passed away. Had lived a very full and wonderful life, but we know her. And so we wanted to go for her. And um, it was an uplifting and very uh, pleasant experience. Then we left the funeral home right after the funeral was over. We went straight to a restaurant in town to celebrate a birthday of another friend. And so it's been kind of a busy day. <laughs> this this morning before I left for the committee meeting, I I didn't get hardly any stitching done. I had just I think I had gotten a couple of links of thread done. And then when I got home from that meeting, um, waiting to go to the funeral, <laughs> I think I had gotten up to a little over 100 stitches. And then when we got home tonight from having dinner, I wanted to finish up the number of stitches I needed for a prompt. And because this item, this project, Spring and Hawk Run Hollow, I'm working on this square right here right now. It is going to meet all three acrostics that I'm working on, all for the letter R. So in the magazine monthly challenge, I'm working on, right now I'm working on charge it, so the R in charge it. In 24 hours of cross stitch, it's impromptu. There's a one R in there. And then in the daily 30 group, that acrostic is St. Patrick's, and there's one R in there. And in the daily 30 group, there's a minimum number of stitches you have to do for that to qualify, and that is 300 stitches. So my goal today was 300 stitches. And when we got home after dinner tonight at about 8.45 or 9, I came up here and I got busy. And I did the other 200 stitches, and I wound up actually getting 325 because when I got just shy of 300, I had to stitch this big motif. <laughs> So I wound up getting 325, but isn't that pretty? Those colors are very subtle, very lovely. I worked on this stem. I had part of it stitched. I had one color all the way up stitched. So then there were two other colors of green, and then this was the start of that big flower. And then I did this motif and this motif. And together that totals 325. So that's my stitching for the day, and it hit all three prompts, so I'm pretty excited about that. Well, that means I got one of my whips that I'm using for prompts that's on a roller frame accomplished today. And a big accomplishment because it knocked out three prompts, which was really, really good. Tomorrow, I'll be stitching with my friend Glow. We stitch virtually. We try to stitch once a week. And I think I mentioned before, we are both stitching on Miss Christmas Eve right now. So we have decided we're gonna stitch it together every Thursday. So that's what I'll be working on tomorrow. 
and I'm excited about that. I'm happy to be able to do that with her. And I don't know that it is any of my um, prompts. Doesn't matter because that's just what we want to do. But I'm gonna I'm gonna go on to bed now. It's after 10:30. Uh, I just stitched till I made it. <laughs> so I'm gonna go and join Coco and my hubby. I think they're already asleep, and uh, I'll have to pay the price. Coco will be asleep on my pillow, and by the time I get to bed in order to get her to move, <laughs> she will have to climb on her mommy, on my belly, and she will lay there and let me scratch under her ears and all down her back until she's had all her fill of mama's love, and then she will slide off and lay right next to me and, and cuddle uh, to go to sleep, and I can't wait. I love it. So I'm gonna go do that, and I will hopefully have some stitching to share with you tomorrow. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello, fellow stitchers. How are you? This is Dina, and it is the 3rd of March, and I'm here to talk to you about my stitching today. I stitched with my friend Glow today, so that means we worked on Miss Christmas Eve. This is a... a Kind of a stitch along we're doing together, unofficial, but um, we don't have a hashtag or anything like that. But we are going to try to work on it together whenever we stitch together each week. So today, I pulled out Miss Christmas Eve, and I started work, continuing working on her arms. I am working from the middle up. Glow is working from the middle down. And between the two of us, we almost have an FFO. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that'll be great. Um, we'll get to see how each side, you know, the top or the bottom, is turning out as we go. So I started on her arms today and worked my way up toward her neck, and I stitched 332 stitches today. And so here is where I got to. And I think I probably need to put something behind here because it looks like it's showing through. This may help you see it a little bit better. Okay, here we are. That's better. Um, hard to see the skin because it's not backstitched yet, but um, the other day I worked on one of the arms and got the light, I think it was this one, I got the light color done up until it met the shoulder. That was what I did the last time that I stitched. And so today, I started on the light on this arm, I came all the way up, crossed the chest. There's a lot of beading going on in here and crying it, or um, actually water lilies, I think are part of them. But I stitched on her neck all the way up until you hit her choker collar. So she's got on a really beautiful necklace that looks like an old-fashioned choker collar or choke, choke collar um, piece. Anyway, um, I am ready to start working on that the next time that I stitch on her. So she's going with me on vacation because Glow and I are hoping to get to talk together um, one of the days while we're on vacation and um, that means I can work through that uh, necklace and on up into her face and then start on her hair. So I would love to be able to get some good progress on it. I, I'm not going to make a goal to finish her whole face and head because I'm only going to be stitching on her the one day while we're stitching together. And so I think to try to do her face, her necklace face and head with all her hair and everything would be too much for one day. So I'm not gonna make a goal. I'm just gonna stitch in that direction and keep going as you know much as I can. Um, but I, I'm loving it. It's stitching up beautifully. So looking forward to taking that with me so we can stitch on it in the coming week. I hope you're having a great start to your weekend. We did. Our son, he got the day off and he, um, he came and, and saw us 
for lunch and picked up some more things to take back to his house. He's taking uh, more stuff out of the basement, which is great. Um, so anyway, that was a, a unexpected pleasure today. He just called and said, hey, what are you doing? And can I come by and pick up some things? And I said, yes, if you'll have lunch with us. <laughs> so I got to see him and that was wonderful. Um, let's see what else. Um, he bought a new outfit recently and he just, he didn't have any nice clothes to wear, but I'm going to put a picture in here of him in the dressing room when he put on his vest and his dress pants over his t-shirt, but he was letting me see what I thought of it. And it's the first time I've seen him really in clothes that fit in a long time. And I just want to, I want to share it with you. Here's his picture. Well, I'm so tickled. I can't stand it. He's done such a good job. Um, thanks. That's all the news fit to print. Um, Coca doesn't know we're going yet. We haven't told her. Uh, we'll tell her tomorrow because the suitcase will tell her. When we start packing her suitcase, you know, she starts guarding it. So she'll know. But I think she'll be happy because when we pack that, that means she's going with us. So that, that'll be good. That's all the stitching for today, and I'm going to say good night and happy stitching this weekend. Yes. Okay. This is um, what I found when I came downstairs a few minutes ago. I think the mallard has lit the dust. <laughs> Coco. Coco, come here, Coco. Come here, baby. What happened to your duck? What happened to your duck? Did you do that? Did you do that? You're not saying, huh? Well, see all the stuffing all over the floor. <laughs> And I think this is a telltale sign, stuffing all over Coco's favorite place to lay. So now, I think she's looking for her next victim. That's what I think. She's getting out of here while the getting's good. <laughs> uh, well, her job is done. The mallard's dead.